Thank you for joining me today for Real Estate Revenge Review. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black. I'm licensed uh, minister, licensed, licensed to preach and ordained as a minister, and I have my PhD in Sacred Biblical Studies. And I'd like to thank you for joining me today. Today we're going to be talking to you on the continued basis of my book, What If You Knew How Much God Loves You. And my name is Dr. Sylvia Black, and I'm the author of this book. And we're going to be talking on part two of the fruits of long suffering that illuminate in love. And we're coming from chapter 14, so when you get a copy of the book and you're in your front and you see this message, you'll be able to pretty much follow along. Now, when you are at peace, you are in harmony with your thoughts and feelings. The Bible tells us in Philippians 4, 6-8 in the King James Version, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God, and the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, uh, whatever things are true, whatever things are noble, whatever things are just, pure, lovely, whatever things are good report, if there is any virtue, and if there is anything praiseworthy, meditate on these things. May the Lord have the blessing to the reading, here and doing of his mighty power and the magnanimous word. Now, long sufferings are fruits in disguise. Okay, what was meant to hurt you usually ends up helping you. And I'm going to explain the two types of suffering. Okay, now what the devil meant to hurt you, God would turn that hurt into victory. Everything that the devil, the enemy, the workers of iniquity, the beast of the field, the fallen angel and his demons, the fallen angels and his demons, everything that they do to you will help you move you up into your next level of anointing in the Lord. If it was not for your trials and tribulations that you go through, there will be no breakthrough. You have to go through it to get to it. No one bypasses suffering. Okay, in order to know the power of Jesus' resurrection, you must know the power of his suffering. Come on, somebody help, give me some help up in here. Either you suffer as a slave to righteousness for doing what is right in the sight of God, or you suffer as a slave to sin for doing what's wrong in the sight of God. These are the two different types of suffering, okay? Either way, you're going to suffer. And I spoke about this before. Suffering as a slave to righteousness, God is pleased with you. And suffering as a slave to sin, God is not pleased with you. You may say to yourself, what is the sense in serving God if you're going to suffer anyway? Well, the difference is that you have a chance of eternal salvation as opposed to eternal damnation, okay? Now, suffering as a slave of righteousness can lead to eternal salvation. Suffering as a slave to sin can lead to eternal damnation. And hell is not a place of rehabilitation. It's a place of condemnation, okay? And when you're going to be there forever and ever and ever, all eternity, I mean, there's going to be no end to the torture and the, and the harassment and the suffering that you're going to be enduring in hell if you suffer as a slave to sin for what's doing what's wrong in the sight of God. But if you suffer as a slave to righteousness for doing what's right in the sight of God, then you have a chance of eternal salvation. Now what the enemy does to you is a lesson to be learned. You're being taught the fruits of the Holy Spirit. Suffering develops discipline because your parents may not have sat you down and taught you. Okay, you must go through life's trials and tribulations um, in order to learn the ways in the mind of God. What you think is going to hurt you actually leads to your victory. When you look back over your life, you'll see that I'm right, okay? Life's lessons have taught, have taught you, and those lessons you have learned have allowed you to be strong and successful as you are now, okay? And I'm not ta even talking about money, okay? Sufferings of blessings in disguise, through suffering, your soul gets closer to God. You are forced to read the Bible and stay in the Word. Your suffering causes you to pray more, to stay in God's presence, okay, and to go to church more often. Suffering is a way to strengthen your resolve. God wants strong soldiers in His army. 
Remember though that the battle is not yours, it's the Lord's. Now suffering lets God know if you have what it takes to serve in his army. Suffering will either strengthen you and get you closer to God, or it will destroy you if you let it. Remember, the enemy can't do anything to you that you don't let him do. And God doesn't allow the enemy to do anything to you unless God gives permission. Remember the story of Job, right? Okay, the devil went to and fro and whatnot, and God asked him, you know, in paraphrasing, you know, where are you going? What are you up to? And the devil said, you know, to God, you know, consider your servant Job. If you take away everything that he has, he'll curse you and die. So God gave the devil permission to take everything away from him except his soul. And even the boils that was on him that was supposed to look like leprosy, something that was incurable, especially back then. They didn't have modern medicine like we do now. But something like that, they were, they were superficial wounds. Okay, because God can do anything but fail, and He healed him of it. Okay, and He gave Job double for his trouble when He prayed for his enemies. And God did not curse God, his wife, but He was sat there as a test. And he, Job told his wife, He said, You foolish woman, must we only accept the good things from God and not the bad things? You see, she was uh, stayed on as a test. And the, the Bible doesn't specifically say, and if you know that it does and you find it, please send it to me my email address, but in the Bible, I have not found where it says that he, when God gave him double for his trouble that he stayed with that wife who told him to curse God and die. I mean, I can just imagine when she, she's sitting there looking at the man suffering, you know. He's going through so much hell and high water and whatnot, and he's even ripping his clothes off, putting the ashes and whatnot on it. He's just mourning and he's so miserable, you know. And the devil thought that he was going to curse him and die. Of course, you know, we all know that the devil ain't that smart anyway. And his wife thought that she was going to curse God and die. She just went on and told him, like, he was going to believe her. And the question, my question is, though, did he have his second set of children through that wife that said he couldn't curse God and die? I doubt it. You know, he probably went and married somebody else, you know. But who knows, he might have stayed with her back then. Because the law specifically says, unless you find your wife cheating or your husband cheating, then... If you get divorced and marry again, you'll be committing adultery even as a married man or a married woman. So, you know, we don't know if that's the case. And did they have an official ceremony or was it just a fact that when they procreated, then they became man and wife, like in the story of Jacob? Okay. Now, um, Hebrews 2 and 9, New King James Version, says, But we see Jesus, who was made a little lower than the angels, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor, and that he may, by the grace of God, should taste death for every man. There are many special types of suffering available. Learning to accept suffering helps us to approach the spiritual world. I'm talking about two different types of suffering here. May the Lord have a blessing to be here doing what was mighty powerful and magnanimous word. Now, just because a person suffers doesn't mean that you're cursed. I can't stress this enough. Your suffering will depend on whether you're suffering as a slave to righteousness or as a slave to sin. As I mentioned earlier, God tests us, the world tempts us, and the enemy persecutes us. God usually tests us to see if we're going to humble ourselves or not and continue to serve Him. God, uh, God even though, okay, to serve God even though we're suffering. Can you praise Him in the midst of your suffering? Can you pray when you're hurting? I can't get no help up in here, okay? Because trouble don't last always. When we're tested, this is just what it is, a test. It's only a test, you know. If it hadn't been an actual emergency, you would have been instructed as to when to pray. Can you praise Him in the middle of your test? Can you still trust God while you're being tested? Can you resist temptation and evil through the suffering? Will you still love God while the enemy persecutes you and does all manner of evil against you and call you everything but a child of God? Oh, you're all quiet now. Deuteronomy 8 to the King James Version says, And you shall remember that the Lord your God led you all the way these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and test thee and to know within your heart whether you will keep his commandments or not. There are many reasons why God allows the enemy to persecute us to test us again, to be tempted, usually suffering, it is a, it's to move us to our next level of the 
anointing. Okay? It usually gets worse before it gets better. Okay? When you deal in the spirit realm, every time you pray and ask God for something, He answers you by faith. And He gives you what you need, not necessarily what you want. But He does say He gives you your heart's desire if you, you know. But it has to line up with His Word. Now, one door usually has to close before another one can open. And I learned about the reasons for the suffering when I when I opened the Bible and searched the Word of God. Because my suffering led me to an in, in an indirect way to God. Okay, searching the Bible was my last resort. I have I was at my wits end. I had one of those my that's it moment. I was like, that's it, I'm not gonna take it anymore, you know. And I was at the point where I just didn't know what to do. And then um someone suggested to me, or could have been God's a uh, sweet voice whispering sweet nothings in my ear, suggesting that I look in the Bible and see if I could find any answers in there. And that's exactly what I did. I said, now let me look in the Bible and see. And sure enough, I found answers so comprehensive that I developed several books. And I'm still writing them because every aspect of my research uh, covers a specific topic. This one is about love, the agape love of God, you know. And how is it that we can recognize His love on us? How do we know that God loves us? Well, because the Bible says so. You know, love, charity, and hope, and of the three is love. If you don't have love, you're like a clanging cymbal. You're just making noise, you know. And, and that's a lot of people, so you have to be able to recognize that. And if you start choosing people and you have to be in your life based on the love that they have in their heart, okay, then you'll know you'll weed out the, 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 the people who hate you or don't want you or, just, or don't have any love in their heart. Okay, that's what will actually happen. You weed, weed all them out. Okay, and you'll be able to recognize them. You'll be able to discern that spirit. Okay, I learned about the reasons of suffering, like I said, when I opened up the Bible and I found the answer to my suffering, why I was suffering. You know, because I thought, you know, like I said, I never really gave the devil credit. And I never put my power in his hand by admitting that something negative was going to happen. I mean, you always see the situation and circumstance. And you look at the circumstance as what it is in the natural, you know. I mean, if they're trying to kill you, you look at it like, you know, they're trying to kill you, you know. So you know that death is in the air somewhere, but it don't mean it's going to happen to you. And I would never admit that. So I would always pray for life and life more abundantly. So when I looked in the Bible and I found these answers, I said, oh my God, that's why I'm suffering. I'm suffering as a slave to righteousness and God is pleased with me. He's not angry with me. He's not trying to hurt me. When I, and I'm not, in, <clears throat> I'm not in this world just to serve the purpose of these people so that they can beat up on me and then leave me for dead. That's not why I'm here. And the Bible was so comprehensive and so explanatory in its meaning. It was such a revelation to me, you know. But my suffering led me to God. You know, I had already knew who God was, not informally. I didn't know his name. But I knew that a higher power had existed because I knew there was no way that I could have come out of the hell and I wanted that I was involved in if there wasn't a God, if there wasn't a higher power, a super being that was there, you know, that was up in the sky somewhere, you know, directing my path and correcting me and actually walking beside me and dispatching his angels to protect and watch over me and keep me. Because what I prayed for, I got. I prayed for life when I saw death, but I prayed for life and I got life. So you speak it out your mouth and you get what you say. Okay, and it's strange, isn't it? Because we ask God for so many things, but you think that, you know, he's not answering you, but he's already answered you because it's already with you. But you have to believe and whatnot. And it's not that he's just going to drop it down from heaven. That would be so nice if he's just flying around in, in an airplane or whatever, and you ask him for something, and he just reaches over in his little barrel of goodies and whatever, and just poof, you know, and there you have your million dollars. You know what I'm saying? No, it's not that easy. You actually have to go out and work for it. And that's why he gives us dominion over the earth so that we can go out and get what we need to get here. What we ask him for is supernatural, you know, power and whatnot and the Holy Spirit and all the wonderful things that he has the power over. He gives it to us, you know, through, see, because our efforts alone is, it, you know, it may get us what we want, the money, but it's, it's not going to get us the good success, what it speaks of in the Bible. He says, I wish above all else that uh, as your soul prospers, so will you, you have good success. You will, you know, you will be successful. So that he wishes above all else, all else, all, anything else, that that's the highest on the list. That as your soul prospers, so will you, your body, you, you, your, your pockets get fat, you know, I'm paraphrasing. But, uh, so, you know, we have to understand that 
you know, when, as our soul prospers. Now you see a lot of people out there who are not sinners, ain't stepped foot, I mean, who are not saints, ain't never stepped foot in the church. But yet you look at them as being prosperous. That's not being prosperous, that's making money. Okay, that's not being prosperous. Prosperous is mean when you have good success. It adds no sorrow to it. Okay, when, when you accumulate it and it just comes natural for you. You know, you don't get haughty or proud about it, you don't brag about it, you just keep it a secret. Because you was in your closet praying for the blessings and now God is rewarding you up, at least so the world can see. But you still keep your mouth shut, but to you it comes natural. Because you already had it when you prayed for it 10 years ago, 20 years ago, however long you prayed for it. Look how long it took for Moses to get what he had to get. 40 years. Okay, he was in the wilderness for 40 years. He has allowed you to wander in the wilderness for these some 40 years to humble thee, to test thee, to see if you would serve me or not. That's why God, one of the reasons why God, he wants a family. He wants a family. That's why he chose us, but to make him in his image, you know, we can't look like aliens or animals or something like that. Animals are the lower being. Well, we, have, we have to look like him if he wants a family. And that's why he loves us so much, because he's trying to teach us how to love each other and how to love him and how to worship him and our name. We don't want no rocks crying out to him, but he's telling us, if you don't worship me, I'm going to get somebody to worship and praise me. You know, I mean, and God is up in heaven for all eternity. He got forever and ever. How many years do he give us to live? And how many years do people actually live before they die? You know, a lot of people don't live to, well, he gives us 120 years. And some people don't even reach half of that. I know a lot of people in my family didn't reach half of that day because they ain't never stepped, they ain't never knew nothing about God. You know, and they were wondering why their life was going uh, away. And I would mention God to them and whatnot, and they would close the book on me. You know, every day, you know, they won't talk to me because I'm talking about something that's foreign to them. They can't touch it, they can't feel it, they can't smell it, they can't see it. You're talking about God, you know, and they really want an explanation of it. So sometimes I would just mail them a copy of my book and whatnot, and, and the power would be in their hand to read it. And sometimes they'd read it, but they still didn't come into the church, and they still died early. Some of them didn't read it, they threw it away, threw it in the garbage. You up there sending me a book, would you send me a book for it? You know I don't read no books. That's the problem. Don't give a book to uh, you know, certain people because they're not going to read it. You see what I'm saying? They'll watch a video before they read a book. Um, but the thing is, see, to understand the suffering and to understand why you're going through what you're going through. And know it's part of God's design, His grand design. Okay, and it's not meant to hurt you. Because everything that happens when, when you suffer, <coughs> excuse me. I learned about the reasons for suffering when I opened up the Bible and searched the Word of God. My suffering led me, like I said, in an indirect way to go to God. All through my suffering, my resolve, which I believe helped me through, was that I was not going to let the enemy turn me into something that I didn't want to be. And I had already decided what I wanted to be, the kind of person that I wanted to be in my life. It had nothing to do with who they were or the fact that I had run, in, run into them or met them for the first time or whatever, I had already decided the kind of person that I wanted to be. I knew what kind of life I wanted to live. I knew how many children I wanted to have. <clears throat> Not all of that came to pass the way I wanted it, but I still knew. I had made a decision, and that's one of the most important things that I think God gives us, and that's the ability to make a decision. You have to be able to choose. Okay, no matter where you are, if you feel like you're trapped in it, and you might be actually physically trapped, but I'm born. You can still decide. You can still make a decision. You know, you can still choose, okay? We choose. That's one of the greatest things that we have the ability of doing to make a decision. We choose whether we want to serve God or not. You can choose. You don't have to serve Him or not, but your, your life is going to be hell on wheels, baby, and you're going to get there fast, okay? Now, like I said, all through my suffering, my resolve was not to let them turn me into something that I didn't want to be. They may be able to make me do what they wanted me to do, but they couldn't make me be who they wanted me to become. And they thought that they had the power over me, but they didn't have power over me. Because every effort that they used to, to make me suffer more and more, God blocked it. They tried, but they didn't triumph over me. Okay? And they won't triumph over you unless you let them. Okay, so I had a great willpower and a determination, but it wasn't my own strength, it was the strength of God. Now, I was introduced to God at a young age when I went to church. I was I was like four or five when we first started going to church that I remember, okay? And uh, throughout my life, 
I got saved at 16. And then my grand aunt Nana prayed over me in my 20s to get the demon up out of my spirit. Because even though I had made a decision that I was not going to be what they wanted me to be, I still had a demonic spirit inside of me that was controlling my my And it would have gotten worse. I could have turned out to have been a psychopath or a murderer. You know, murdering, just going around, killing people for no reason at all. Because there was anger inside of me and the devil would have been controlling me. And that's what happens with a lot of people. The devil is actually controlling their actions. It's making suggestions to them. And so they serve it because it sounds good. It looks good. It looks inviting. Yeah, that's something that I want. The devil convince you that that's what you want and then you go after it and you get it. And all your life you serve the devil not realizing that there's a God that's more powerful and more stronger than ever. you got to get it right with God before you can have anything that's going to go right for you. Okay, but once you do know God for yourself, things will go right for you. Like, just like that, baby. You'll have, you know, so much favor and so much success, you know, and it's so easy to get. All you have to do is abstain from certain things. That's why you have to have power, willpower, and a strong determination. Okay? It wasn't until I was, like I said, I was up in age that I actually, you know, read read the Bible when I said that I, that was my last resort because I was tired. I had my that's it moment a lot of time, but this was a real that's it moment. That's it. I'm not going to take it no more. And so I had to look it up in the Bible, you know, and I said, let me stop looking it up. So I typed up the word suffering, you know, when there was internet and whatnot, and I found so many scriptures on suffering. And I was reading it, and I couldn't take my eyes out of the Bible. I couldn't stop reading the Bible. You know, I haven't read the whole Bible. I read, you know, the, the, a lot of the Bible, but mostly I read what pertains to me and what I write about. And this book is, what if you knew how much God loves you? Okay? And the question really I was posing to myself, what if I knew how much God really loves me? You know, um, and, and he loves me. That's why he's been protecting me. That's why he's been keeping me. And that's why he's been keeping you. Okay, the enemy knew that there was something powerful in me, and he knows there's something powerful in you. That's why they hate you so much, because they can see the greatness that exists within you. And they figured that they can, you can, they can hold you back, then you'll bow down to them and worship them and whatnot, you know, and maybe forget about your God, or it don't matter whether you worship him or not, you will worship them too. Because even uh, some of the biblical characters back in the day, they used to think that there were several gods that you had to serve. Okay, oh, this is a topic, honey. I had, I wrote a book on I got to revise it, though. Because I wrote a whole book on suffering. Okay, but I don't know if you could, you could stand like 200 pages of just reading about suffering. It might get you angry or mad or sad or whatever. So I had to redo it and rewrite it. But I have the victory. And you, we, we all have the victory over the devil. The enemy knew that there was something powerful in you, and they knew there's something powerful in you. They know, in me and in you to keep us from our destiny by causing us to suffer. Little did they know that the Holy Spirit had already taken up residence in, in, our, in our soul, my soul. The Holy Spirit had already taken up residence in my soul and I had the victory over all of those, like I said, who tried, to try and tried, but they did not triumph over me. Suffering is a blessing in disguise. God doesn't want us talking about the such or psychiatrists like uh, when we have problems. He wants us to go to Him and refer to His Word and, his, and the Bible. Okay, the only true and living word. All persecution that I endured was helping me to stay closer to God. Suffering forced uh, me to need to understand why I was suffering. Suffering as a slave to righteousness compelled me to open up the Bible and find the answers for myself. Suffering inevitably helped me to write this in other books. The answers I found was, are so compelling, like I said before. I had to document them all and I ended up writing them in books. As a result of documenting my research, which led to books I've written. And this is one of them. What if you knew how much God really loves you? And I, like I said, I was posing the question to me. What if I knew how much God really loved me? I always knew a little bit about love, but the in-depth uh, meaning about love was incomprehensible. I mean, I had to figure it out. I had to read about it. I had to understand it. I wanted to know what true love was really all about. Uh, when you know, I mean, what was love? Was I exhibiting love? Was I receiving love? And then that helped me to get rid of the people that I was, I had to walk alone for a while. You know, you, had, you, you could leave some people alone, even some relatives. You got to say, you know. Ta-ta, what's more important, hanging out with them people? How hanging out with people who won't bring you down? Or walking alone with God who you know is going to uplift you and bless you with the right kind of people? You have to make a decision. You have to choose the kind of life that you want to live. 
Okay, when, when you know that somebody cares about you, that really, really cares about you and do anything for you and has all the power to do it, oh my God, there's, there's, there's nothing that you can't do. Nothing is impossible for you. No blessings will be withheld from you. Okay, when you know that somebody cares about you and to take care of you in all areas of your life, that you cannot take care for yourself through the good times and the bad times, through the heartache and the confusion. When you're young, when you're old, when you're in good health, when you're sick, God is there with his agape love. Okay, wrapping his arms of love around you and whispering sweet nothings in your ear that he loves you and he wants to take care of you if you let him. Oh yeah, you have to do your part too. God will do the rest though. And he won't do it. He's not going to do it all. He dispatches his angels to God and protect you from all hurt, harm, and danger. I've been there, baby. I know. I'm an expert at it. I know what I'm talking about. You know, and I can tell I'm writing a book about, you know, that it might be, it might be a drama. It might be in a story form because it's so dramatic. It, it can only be depicted either in a story or a play, a, music, a musical or something of that nature. Because my life was so, I mean, you, you know, looked at it and you thought sure that I was gone. And there was a few times when the person who attempted to kill me thought that I was already dead. Because, you know, they weren't, they're not doctors, so they didn't know how to test and see if I was dead or not. You know, and I wasn't, of course, and I wasn't, you know, yeah, I am. But then, then they started um, putting their hand under your nose to see if they could feel air coming out your nose. If they had the air, then you were still breathing. But there was one time when they didn't feel no air coming out my nose, so they took me to the doctor and thought I was dead on a number of occasions they thought I was dead. But to their surprise, I wasn't. That person ended up in jail on a number of occasions, okay? They, they were messing with me because they were trying to stay out of jail. But they ended up in jail. And I could have put them in jail for about 10 years. But that's another whole other story. But when I glorify God, I get blessed. Okay, I come out from under the mess, and God turns it into a message. I passed the test, and that was what put me through God. You know, that was what, that, what was it? What I passed the test that I was put through, and God turned that test into a testimony. I put down the booze and picked up the Bible. Can I get some hep up in here? Okay, so uh, this is going to be a part three, y'all. Okay, so... I'm going to do part three on this one. This is, like I said, this is really a book, you know, but I'm, you know, this is a, the, one of the longer chapters, one of the longer segments of this book here. So I'm going to ask you to holler at the sister next time. My name is Dr. Sylvia Black, and I'm going to ask you to see you next time. I'm going to talk about part three of Fruits of the Spirit. Uh, let's see, Fruits of Long Suffering. Okay, holler at the sister.